Last time I got up to the table and temple holder, so let's start with the table. The tabletop, I have found a piece of marine pie that has 13 layers of pie instead of the usual 9 layers that you expect from any marine pie. But the catch with this is, it's just 1 centimeter shorter than the width that I need it to be. So to solve for this problem, I am going to add 2 pieces of solid wood trim on either side to increase the width of this piece. I'm using the panel saw to clean up both edges and rough cutting it to final length. Using some scrap Tasmanian oak around the workshop, I thickness it down to make up for the edge banding. I can again use the panel saw to cut the tabletop to final size. So because the edge bending isn't flush, I am going to trim it down with a router before cutting it to final width. Then I can punch out the hole locations with a nail and drill them out on the drill press. So I am now at my high school and I've set up the CNC to cut out the table hinge. And now that I've got it set up, I can start cutting it out. The CNC took almost 3 hours to cut out the table hinges because I set the speed too slow. As a result, it burned the workpiece but luckily my teacher Mr. Mellows was there when it was smoking and quickly put out the small fire. I can then draw out the holes to accept a 6mm shaft on the drill press. Back at home, I am jointing some pine to make up the table support. Then I can bring it to final dimensions at my high school. Because I am not allowed to use the rip fence out of the panel saw to cut down stock, I had to get my teacher Mr. Miles to cut out the table support to final width. While it's still clamped up, I'm going to drill the hole for the pivot point, and I've already marked out the hole location with a brow point bit. To mark out the locations for the bolt holes, I use a silver pin to locate the axis and that just fits on like that. And then I can just line it up and drill out the pilot hole for a quarter inch bolt. To help lock the table hinge, I'm cutting some relief cuts here. To cut out the box joint on my table support, I'm using my square advanced box joint jig, but like any other box joint that I've done, this one's not supposed to line up with the edge. Instead, it's supposed to line up with a line somewhere in the middle of the workpiece, and I can't really cut them together, or else I'll have an extra finger right here, and that won't be really good. As usual, a very nice fit. With the dry fit done, I'm going to try and glue it up. This came out better than expected, so now I'm going to install the tabletop and also the hinges. One design feature that I added to the original design is to have a tilting table that can tilt from 0 to 90 degrees. And I'm glad that I did the hinges on the CNC because if I did it by hand, I would have never got it to fit correctly. But right now, I still need some knobs to tighten the hinges.
what major problem right now is when I lift the table up and down, instead of having the steel rod rubbing against the marine ply, it is actually rubbing against a piece of pine, and I need to actually stop that from happening because the pine wears out much quicker. Oh, still not working. Well, desperate situation needs a desperate solution. Mine is a dating lubricant, but wax will lubricate everything. I've got the table on the base and I've adjusted it so that it's almost square to the router, but again I'm not going to fuss with it too much, at least not until the final assembly. Oh, I need springs for this one as well. With the table done, I can move on to the template holder. When I was making the box joints for the corners of the template holder, I actually used the wrong blade which was 0.1 of a millimetre narrower and also had 60 teeth. As expected, a very very tight joint. I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to glue this together. And I also actually have some gaps at the back because the two passes didn't line up exactly. But that should be alright because a box joint for this application is already way overkill. And now I can cut them to width by referencing off the fingers. All that's stopping me from gluing this up is cutting a section out over here. Oh god, just watch me struggle with this. Right, now you can actually watch me struggle. Well, that was easy. Definitely not something you want to do on a Sunday. I can then cut out a piece of hardwood for the top of the template holder. At school, I got Mr. Miller's to face joint a piece of hardwood nice and flat. I can then use that face as a reference when passing it through the thickness up. To create a seamless joint, I used the belt sander at school to sand the top of the template holder flat. Well, the belt sander did a really good job at cleaning the piece up, but there's still a little bit left here, and I guess I'll just have to live with it because I can't do it without losing a lot of material. To flatten the template holder, I'm first going to flatten this side along with a spacer and then after that I can flip it around and with the spacer I can flatten the other side on a drum sander as well. Once the frame was nice and flat, I also trimmed it square on a panel saw. For the last two passes where I had to reference off the fresh edges, I had to get Mr. Miles to help me with that. Well, I finally got the horizontal borer set up to cut the slots in the template holder. And I've got a piece of melamine to support it from the back so that nothing moves. And also clamped it down firmly as well. And hopefully it all goes well.
If I mount the template holder flush with the base, the router will actually hit the template holder. So I'm going to offset the template holder a little bit so that the router just clears it. And I'm also going to cut off this circle here which will allow me to have a little bit more travel. And then it was time.